there was recently a major update for Adobe Photoshop, and one of the new features they included was a sky replacement tool. And I was really excited when I heard about this because I figured this might be the perfect way to blend in your tracked Milky Way photos and your static foregrounds, because in the past, we had to use some type of luminosity mask software, whether that was the Easy Panel or Instamask or maybe even Lumenzia. There's a lot of these different panels. They all work largely the same, but they can also be kind of overwhelming for beginners. And in this video, we're just gonna test out the new sky replacement tool, see how well it works on a couple different images, and if it's easy enough for those of you who are still new to Photoshop. Let's start off with this photo of Mobius Arch. This is gonna be the easiest way to test it because it's a very clean horizon. There's no bushes or trees. Now, if I was doing this myself, I would just grab the quick selection tool, quickly tag the foreground, get rid of this little hole, and then from here, I can just add a layer mask, grab a Milky Way, throw it in here, and we'll just duplicate our foreground layer real quick. There we go, we're done, right? Obviously the Milky Way doesn't match, but I'm just trying to prove my point. That was very easy to do, I did in less than 10 seconds. So if that was that easy, you would think the sky replacement tool would be that easy as well. Let's find out though. So we'll go up to edit, sky replacement, and once we click on that, we're going to be greeted. Usually the first thing I notice is the sky. You can either choose one of the presets or you can load in your own. For example, if you want to put in a blue sky, if you're doing landscapes, for example, you can click on one of the presets or maybe you have one that you took that you like better, whatever you want to do. In this case, I am going to import one manually. The way you would do that is clicking this little plus button and then navigating to a folder where you have a Milky Way photo, which I do right here. And this is a raw photo. So generally I'd recommend doing some edits to the raw and then maybe saving that as a TIFF file and loading that in. But we'll just go with this for right now. Okay, so that looks pretty good already, but obviously I missed the hole here in the arch. But once I've selected the sky I wanna use, then we have our shift edge. I would just move this left and right and see if it makes the image look better or worse. In this case, both ways look bad, so I'll just leave it at zero. And even if it doesn't look great right now, don't worry about that. We can always fix this in a minute. There's also a faded edge. And again, you just have to mess around with these sliders to see what they do, but you can kind of see that what's going on there on the screen. In this case, I'd probably leave it towards the far left at zero. You could try adjusting the brightness of the sky if things look a little bit fake. Also the temperature. In this case, I think it looks fine and I'm gonna leave the scale at 100. That's really all there is to it. Now I can hit OK. When it completes, we have a whole mess of layers. We have a brightness layer right here, which is what I just did a minute ago. We have a color balance, which is why I made the image a little bit more blue. I don't really care about any of those, except these two right here, the sky and this blurry thing. Those are the two things that I'm worried about. And just by turning off the eyeballs, I can get rid of everything. Let's focus right now on this layer mask. You can see it's the most defined. It's this little black and white thing. If you hold down the Alt or Option key and click on it, you're not gonna see a full screen preview of the layer mask. And you can see now that it had some troubles, obviously. What I want is the sky to be completely white and the foreground to be completely black. And one way around this is using the dodging and burning tools. Burning will make things darker. Dodging will make things brighter. If I want to make the sky a little bit brighter, I'll click on the dodge tool and just tag the sky real fast. Then I'll swap over to the burn tool and hit the foreground. Again, I want a clean horizon where the sky is completely white, the foreground is completely black in this case. And that's about as good as I can get. Once I've gone through and done that, I can just click on any one of these thumbnails down here. That'll get me back to my normal view. And there is our final layer mask. We still have this little hole in the arch we got to get. So I would just use the quick selection tool, tag it, take a white paintbrush, and most importantly, make sure I'm clicking on the layer mask, otherwise none of this is gonna work, and then paint it in. And there we go. Now if I hit Control or Command D, there's our final image. And that looks pretty good to me. I mean, the Milky Way position could be a little bit better, but in terms of the blend, that looks fine. Unfortunately though, that took me three or four times longer than just using the quick selection tool I showed you a few minutes ago. So for this particular image, the sky replacement tool is a complete waste of time. So you know if you have a clean horizon like this, just use the quick selection tool 
as you would normally do, and you'll be fine. So that's our first test, not quite the result we all wanted. Let's move on to our next image. This was taken in Yosemite, and we'll do the same thing. We'll go to Edit, Sky Replacement. Once it loads, we can either choose our sky or do whatever you want to do. I just recommend moving the sliders left and right and seeing which direction looks better. You can obviously go too far though. And remember, it doesn't have to be perfect as long as it looks okay. That's good enough for me. And I think that's gonna work, I'll just hit okay. Same deal, we have our layer mask right here. This is really the only one I care about. I'll hold down the Alt or Option key and we see the same problem. The foreground needs to be completely black, the sky needs to be completely white, and we have all these areas down here that need fixed. The fastest way to do that, in this case, is using the burn tool and just paint over the foreground until it's completely black. Some areas you might have to come in here manually with a paintbrush and paint them out, but usually that burn tool will speed things up a lot. And I mean, this is actually working pretty good at the end of the day because we have all these little branches. So that might work. And then once I've got that looking good, I'll swap over to my dodge tool and just tag the sky until it's pure white. Might have to go a couple passes. Now that we're done for the most part, you'd want to spend a little more time though, I'm just rushing through this. Now we'll go back, click on any one of our thumbnails to get rid of this black and white thing over on the right. And there's our blend. So we've got our before and after. The problem in this case is it looked really fake. And that's because the foreground is way too bright. And I see this a lot online especially on Instagram, people post photos that are similar to this and you can instantly tell it's fake because the foreground and the sky just aren't the same brightness the way they should be and the color balance is completely different. So if you see that your image just doesn't look right, in this case I would add a curves layer, make the sky really bright using a clipping mask. So we've affected the sky, it looks a little bit better. I would add another curves layer, this time only applying to my foreground and make that darker. And that looks a lot more natural. The only problem is the white balance is completely different, so you'd still have to fix that. And again, the blending wasn't perfect. You still have some harsh edges you'd have to clean up yourself. But for how quick that one was, I think it worked pretty well. And this just looks like a mess here in the tree. I mean, that's pretty terrible. And that's what I was afraid of. You know, if we turn all this off, you can see how many of these little fine branches there are. So in this case, it worked okay, but if I was gonna come back and do this for real, I would use one of the Luminosity Mask softwares and really spend some time to get all these little brushes out. And that would give you ultimately the best result. So for our second test, Sky Replacement did okay, but it still has some room for improvement. Our third test is kind of my traditional testing ground. This is like the perfect image. Let's try it one more time. We'll go to Edit, Sky Replacement, Again, you can click on the sky to choose your own sky image if you wanna go that route. But look at this, it already looks really good. So I'm just gonna hit okay. This is finally the time where it shines. Now if we click on our layer mask right here, hold down the alter option key, click on it one more time. That actually really did a nice job of selecting all these little branches. It's kind of pixelated, which I'm not thrilled about. I don't know why it is that pixelated because if we turn this off, you can see it's much sharper there, but when we look at the layer mask, it's just really like low res. I don't know why that is. So in this case, I would do the same old technique I've been showing you. Burn the foreground so it's completely black. Dodge the sky so it's completely white. It'll take you a couple passes to get it looking perfect. But like I said, this is kind of like the, the worst case scenario you're gonna have for an image where you have all these branches that are really fine and detailed. And this would normally take me 10 to 15 minutes using luminosity masks to get a clean blend, but I'm already almost done in 30 seconds or so. I mean, the mask is probably not gonna be great, but for the average person just trying to get started, this might be a great option. Let's try that again. So that looks pretty good. Even over here on the branches, it's not the best, but it's definitely kept a lot of that detail there. And don't forget, I really rushed through that dodging and burning. I could have done a much better job I just wanted to show you guys today if that was actually worth the time or not. And I guess my final word would be, if you're just getting into Photoshop, this is a great way to get started if you're having trouble with your blending. But at the end of the day, based on what I've seen, it's not the best. 
And for whatever reason, it's like really low res here along the horizon. For a comparison, let's just quickly use the Easy Panel 2.0 from Jimmy McIntyre. In this case, I'll just click probably 16-bit dark LMs. This is going to create six different layer masks that we can choose from by clicking these buttons one through six. And maybe dark six would work. Now if we zoom in, see how much more high res this looks compared to the luminosity mask from it earlier, which was right here. See how it's just night and day difference. So that's just one more reason why you really do want to learn how to use these luminosity masks because they will make your life at the end of the day uh, a lot easier when it comes to this blending. But again, I'd do the same thing. I would take a white or black paintbrush, get all these easy to reach areas first. Once the foreground is mostly white, then I could swap over to a black paintbrush and do the same thing for the sky. What we're doing now is just manually doing that sky replacement using luminosity masks, which takes some practice to get even just an understanding of what I'm actually doing. But I do have a Patreon if you want to learn more. That's 10 bucks a month, and there's at least a dozen hours worth of tutorials, if not substantially more on there, that'll show you what I'm doing for Deep Space and Milky Way. I've also got some full courses, which have at least a dozen hours there as well of new content. But the whole point of those is just to get you comfortable editing, because that's one area where people have a lot of problems. In this case, I'm just trying to show you how quickly you can do it with a luminosity mask and get a better result than using the sky replacement from Photoshop, which is nice they included it, but at the end of the day, for what we have to do for Astro, you really got to have more precision, and that's what we're looking at. So that's pretty good there. It still needs a little bit of work. And then if we go back to Easy Panel, I'll hit Make Selection. And then finally, add a layer mask. Then I can grab our sky, which we have right here. Drag it in. Duplicate our foreground layer. Drag it on top. And there we go. Now if we look at our trees, they look a lot sharper. They're still a little bit pixelated, but compared to the other option, you can see I have a lot more detail left over. And overall, it's just a little bit higher quality. Anyway, that's all I want to talk about today. I think I've gone on long enough. I just wanted to show you that Photoshop does have a new sky replacement tool. It's worth experimenting with, and it should give you fairly decent results. But really the big thing is just knowing how layer masks work. And if you're still having trouble, if you've got a lot of bushes or trees or these fine little branches, then you will want to spend the time and learn about luminosity masks like Easy Panel, Instamask, Lumenzia, whatever you want to do. Uh, ultimately, that's going to give you the best results, but it will take you some more time. And that's all I've got for you today. Thanks for watching.